Well, Scott and I was on for 30 minutes trying to figure it out. Oh, sorry, Scott. I mean, Justin. I was like, I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> what did I volunteer for? No. <laughs> okay. Um, see, it, it didn't make it to the show. Well, you said it turns black, yeah. right? Right, it turned black. So it just didn't work. Okay, a couple of things to do. Uh, this is, you go through, you find a subdivision. Uh, and please, uh, I know this is going to be helter skelter now since it's been this long. Uh, find a subdivision that you want to work for geo farming. You go through and then you, you do the circle, just like you're doing a, a, a search. And we're going to do right here, which should be my area. Probably come to the people. Nope. Want to share down here? Want to get a little closer? Yes. Easy for me to do, folks. Okay, so I go through the subdivision. I I draw my map around it. I go to closed for the past year. So what I'm after here is, is this subdivision worth doing my farming? And you can see, as soon as I can get back to... So in this subdivision, there's probably 1,100 homes. So in the past year, there's 81 sales. That, uh, so that's a, that's a good sign because you want to make sure that there's just not 20 or 30 because when you're doing your marketing, whether you're doing mailing or what, however you're, you're sending out your literature, you want to make sure that it's, it's a sufficient number to make it worth your while to do geo farming in your neighborhood. The other thing you want to do is you go over here and you do you do a download. You download this. You do an export and you export it and you're looking for, you do a search by brokerage and a search by listing agent because out of those 81, if 40 of them are Keller Williams and the other 40 are Red One, then I know that Red One is already there. What we're trying to do is avoid if some broker or some realtor is dominating the area. I This is where I live, and I know that no one is dominating the area, including me. Uh, every, there's, everybody is getting two or three uh, a year. So I know that I can go in and, and continue to do my geo farming. And I've been increasing my numbers every little bit uh, every year but it's still coming a little bit slow. So I'm going to plan D to, to do more of my, my geo farming here. So the other, one of the things I, any questions on drawing, drawing a map and, and determining how many, how many solds there are compared to how many homes are there? Has everyone done that before? Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I always, and I will check different subdivisions. I, I have, there's three close to where I live. And then there's two areas where I used to live. And, it, and those are five of my eight that I, that I market. So then during, during COVID, I had to go back through and double check to see how many solds I had. And I stopped doing some marketing in some of the areas because there were so few houses being sold in that subdivision. I stopped all my marketing. So you have to continue, depending on what the market is doing, go back and rerun your map. <clears throat> so the other thing I do on this, <clears throat> I go to my, uh, I go to my contact uh, management contact. And 
I have set up searches. And this is a search I have for monthly sold. So all eight of my categories <clears throat> are here. So when I when I do on the on the fourth, which I did last night, I did all the sales for January. I just I go through has has my information and January one through January thirty first. I go through and it will print off all of the solds that have been uh, processed in the month of January. So I take this information, number one, it helps me know, continue to stay updated on all eight areas as to the, the days on market. When you look at this, then when you look at the sales amount, list price, sold price. So I do my compare my visual comparison to see what the market has been like in the month of January. And then I look at, at the days on market to see what is happening in that particular subdivision. So then I go to, if I can get there. I need my computer expert. How do I get back to a different screen? I want to get to my Facebook page. Just, uh, I think all you have to do is hit the tab. You were on the sc sharing screen. You just had to hit the tab. You've got different, um, different browsers open. Mm-hmm. I had it set up in the office, then it doesn't work here. Yeah, the Facebook tab is right there in the middle. Okay. Oh, it went back. Where was? It's right beside the Flex MLS top. It top right beside, like to the. First tab to okay. left on the top. It was it was right here. So because uh there we go. Is that it? Is that where you want Yeah, to? that's fine. Thank you. So here's here's the uh, Facebook page for the, the subdivision I, I live in. So I changed this to, to go on holidays, special events. Uh, anything that's going on in the neighborhood. And, and there's all kinds of things. I, I will change this four or five times throughout the month just to get different variety. And every time I change it, uh, I'll get I'll get more likes, I'll get more hits. And it... so, <clears throat> so this is my local coffee bar that I, I attend. I post stuff like this on this Facebook page because they're just three miles down the road. So I post content like this. 90% of what I post is not real estate for the across the board. And I usually try to put a little comment up here. Uh, sounds like a good duo, Carmel and, and Vanilla. You just try to make something uh, about it. And I've had 44 posts or 44 reaches so far. And I just put this up like two hours ago. So it was a pretty good hit. This is... This is the four houses that sold in our neighborhood in the month of January. So I'll put the list price. I put the street number. I do not put the, or not, I do not put the street number because they don't want someone to be mad at me because I posted how much they sold sold it for or how much they bought it for. So I just put the street. The square footage, I always pick the, the larger column uh, on the two square feet that you get from the uh, from the MLS. We have we have all kinds. We have one story, two story, and three story in our subdivision. So I just I list that so they know. Baths full and half beds, space uh, parking spaces, and then days on market. This gives this gives them basic information as to what's going on in our neighborhood. 
and they do I do that every every month on the fourth or the fifth. In addition to that, I will go in on a Monday or a Tuesday and indicate. I'm sorry, I'll go back on a Thursday and indicate any open houses that are coming up in the general area uh, for Saturday and a Sunday. I do one for Saturday, one for Sunday. So if they want to visit on an open house, they've got that information. On Tuesday, I will also list what is available in our neighborhood. I'll have in there that coming soon and active so that they have a good idea of what, what information or what how homes are being sold or what's what's available. So in case they have friends and neighbors to uh, that they want to to buy a house. You can see some of the stuff that we that they post and this goes in 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 spurts. Sometimes I have seven posts in a row and then other times uh, there'll be other other input. This is what this is my neighbor across the street <clears throat> talking about the HOA because we have a meeting coming up in March and April. We've got some issues to discuss, so she's wanting to know about the meeting. Kim Thomas, one of our realtors, uh, posted a response back to that. So anytime Kim and I see something on Facebook, we will try to offer a response or an answer to everything that not everything to some a lot of the things that gets posted. I've been there since 2005, so I'm one of the old old timers there. So I, I have the history that a lot of people don't have. So the idea is to get people to post things, and whatever they they post, once a, <clears throat> I think it's once a week, I will I will put, do a post thanking the person that has just joined our HOA, that has just joined the Facebook page. And also the ones that have commented and the ones that have made a post and the ones that with the most responses. So I will I will do things like that to get comments. And this is one of them, I do believe. Uh, they're they're doing a welcome. So it's getting interaction. I try to do anything that can get interaction on the Facebook page about what's going on in the neighborhood. <clears throat> some of our some of our neighbors will post. Things for sale, uh, which you can't do on next door unless you're in a, a specific category. So they'll they'll ask questions, and sometimes I wait until to, to see if anyone else is going to answer. Oftentimes, if it's a touchy situation, I'll do a direct mail or a personal mail uh, about what's going on instead of spreading my everyone's dirty laundry on on the Facebook. And then we always have missing packages. <clears throat> we. Uh, our postal service does a wonderful job, but some days for some months, we, we must have 15 different post people reaching out or d delivering packages. So people are always getting upset about packages and mail missing 182 posts. That's doing pretty good. That's about a third of our, of our population. So then this is what this, another thing that we use that we've trained our, our members to do it in our Facebook page is if you have a question, post it. Oftentimes people have had contractors, driveway people, patio people, roofers that have done good jobs, bad jobs. So they're asked. So we always ask for who do you have that can do this or this? Uh, but for the most part, they don't put negative comments on our Facebook page. Uh, and we keep it clean. We keep it away from politics and religion and any negative or bullying con content. Uh, they can go to the next door and do that there. So here's uh, here's one. That, it was a testimonial about uh, for the for the chimney person. So this was a good good testimony and a good free PR for this person. We don't allow a person that does like cleaning vents that lives in our neighborhood to post something about their, about their company. We tell them that they have to get a, a client or a customer that has used them to post a testimonial for that, for, for that particular company. So we try to try to keep, keep away from some self information. And then we have some really good clients that will do uh, videos about some issues and they'll explain it, what, what has happened and who to go to and how much it's going to cost to do, do the repair. 
and who to stay away from. This happens to be a PEM uh, uh, project, and it's their 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 uh, their adapter. So we have to go to them, and this and this uh, resident was good enough to tell the people that in their in their scenario. So there we had 210 people that that reached that read the post. So it was it was good. So we tried to keep, and you can see where I've changed some of the of the pictures to uh, to reflect certain holidays. And then we always have people that let their dogs out, cats out, and they run wild. So they're always doing doing posts to watch out for our furry friends. So here's where we have welcoming our new neighbors. I do this just to try to get people to to reach out to our new neighbors and say, hey, welcome to the group. You know, if, if you have anything, we're here to help. And I, it's just content after content getting getting our names out there. Kim does a wonderful job. Uh, Lindsay uh, has moved in a while back and she's one of our new Red One Realtors. And she'll also chip in with some information about the neighborhood. So this is always great. <clears throat> it's Girl Scout cookie time. So they've probably, I, I know this is self-serving, but it's for a, an organization. So we allow uh, this to be posted without, without any issues. <clears throat> Uh, this was funny. Somebody noticed an electrical box that was open. They didn't stop. They did. They waited until the next day to shut the, to go shut it. They thought I was going. To, once they thought since I they posted it on this website, they thought I was going to go over and shut the box. Nope, I didn't do that. <clears throat> so then we just have issues about how do you deal with the clubhouse? How do you deal with the HOA and, and different things of that of that nature? So, so we try to make sure we verify how many homes are being sold. Is there a predominant brokerage or a realtor? And then we, we create a Facebook page. And this, when I started this, there was not a Facebook page for our subdivision. Uh, so I created it. Our neighboring uh, Hayden Farms at Hayden, at Hayden Farms in the know, uh, there, they had a Facebook page. The Red One Realtor moved. She asked me to take over, so I was able to, to pick up that, that Facebook page and do the same thing up there that I do here. Uh, the other thing to do, <clears throat> when, you, when you're on Facebook page, type in a neighborhood and see if you can find the Facebook page. If you can't find one, that means that's probably going to mean that you can create one for that neighborhood. If there is one for the neighborhood, Make sure you look at the Facebook page to see how, how active it is. If it's not active where they have very few posts and, and not a lot going on, contact the administrator, <clears throat> call them or email them, and ask them if, if they would appoint you to be a co-administrator and because you're interested in developing the Facebook page and, and make it more active. Uh, I've done that a couple of times. I've been told no three times yes once so it, it does work uh you just have to keep at it i do eight facebook pages and that keeps me busy uh then i also do uh facebook market buy sell trade uh post in some of those different areas and uh and i post content in, the, in those areas too don't get a lot of response but i'm just looking for a couple from from them so, um, so I know I went through that fast and didn't ask any questions, but does anyone have any comments before I go on? Did I lose everybody? A quick question. You said the Facebook page existed before you, you lived there and no, you had to get permission or. Okay. The, the, the one where I live, Hayden Crossing North, <clears throat> that did not exist. <clears throat> Excuse me. I created that from scratch. The one from Hayden Farms, uh, Heather was running that, and she, her and her hubby and family moved to a different subdivision. So before she moved, she asked me to be co-administrator, and then when she moved, she she stepped away, and I took over that one one hundred percent. So uh, the one in the falls that Hayden run, they had a, a Facebook page. It was horrible; no one was using it. So I just 
did a, ma a couple of mailings in that subdivision, created a new Facebook page, and I took over the area, and the other one just died. So the people are using my Facebook page because of the content and what, what we do. If there's a current Facebook page there, you can call them and ask them to make you a, a co-administrator. And if they don't, and it's a Facebook page that is horrible, it's not being utilized, there's no activity, you could ask them, say, hey, I would like to help you, but please make me co-administrator. And if they don't, then you create a brand new Facebook page and go there. I I trademark, I don't trademark it. My, all my Facebook pages are, let me bring them up here. <clears throat> like Hayden Crossing, North Area, Dublin, Ohio, USA. Here I put Riverbend, Columbus, Ohio, zip code. And I, I usually put zip codes on most places so everyone can easily identify where the Facebook page or what the, what area it, it uh, represents. There's a, there's a subdivision with the same name over about three miles east of us by the river. And I constantly get a request for to be a member of our of our Facebook page because it's the same number. So if you find one that's out there and it's not being utilized, contact the administrator. And if if you can't get a hold of it, see if you can find someone that lives in the area and have them go to the Facebook page to find out who the person is. But always ask. Michelle Brooks always tells the story that the ones she did in her area. She called the person and asked them if they could put her put her as a co-administrator. And I think within a few months, they just gave the whole Facebook page to her and she ran it from there. Okay, sounds good. Uh, just one other quick question. So I'm noticing that you do, or you said that you don't post a lot of um, real estate um, information. How often would you post anything real estate related? Uh, I'll probably post between four and twelve things every month. Okay. And part of it, part of it, sales, open houses, what's happened in the past month, uh, and just other stuff about interest rates if they if they adjust, or if I I have a lender that uh, that has mortgage tax credit, uh, payment assistance, just some things for first responders, educators. I'll put some stuff that is is pertinent to a single issue. But I try to let them know that I'm there to answer their questions and to help them out and just to have, encourage other people to do posts because I want more people to use it than just me. So far, we've done a really good job of keeping all the other realtors from posting or doing anything about their activity in our neighborhood. Uh, I've been surprised, but I've uh, been lucky so far. Well, I've been fortunate, I'll put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? just open houses and uh, store comps and, uh, and uh, the new active coming houses. Other than that, oh, your your comps. That was a, that's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> I will since we have single family two uh, one story two bedrooms one story three bedrooms two story two bedrooms two story three bedrooms three story two bedrooms. I will do a CMA for like the, a quarter. Or the whole like, or the whole year, and I will be specific for three story, two bedroom, two car garage, and then I'll do like two story, three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and I'll just do a CMA or what is like a CMA for th that particular uh, style. <clears throat> so I might wind up doing seven of those for the whole neighborhood, just so that they can see because. I tried to do it as, as a subdivision on what happened for a quarter, or maybe it was a year, I don't remember. And I had all kinds of questions. Well, what do you have? Can we just see three stories? So, okay, I got the message. So the next time I, I reran it, and ever since then, I do everything specific to stories, bedrooms, and baths. We don't have basements where we live, so that's not an option. Most everything is a two-car garage. There are a few with a one-car garage. 
So I'll post whatever, whenever I get a question, I always alter what I do. But that way they can see, and I do that for the other, other Facebook pages too, uh, Hilliard Commons and Hilliard Villages. There was two different Facebook pages there. Uh, I took over those two, then I combined them into one because they're neighbors, they're neighbors, and they're almost identical except one's a little bit higher price than the other. So all those are almost all of those are two bedrooms. So it was really easy to do a CMA and to list all the sales for two bedrooms, two baths, and it, it was great and it was good information for their for their uh, residents. Other questions? Okay, one of the things that we we talked about on uh, when we do these Tuesday uh, one hour sessions is that there's going to be several different uh, like to, like my plan is to do like seven different one hour sessions. So there's six of us at the current. So like every seven Tuesday, I'll be back. I'll do uh, geo farming two on the next one. This will sort of give you a, a rough overview of every, most of the things that we do. When we get back to the second one, uh, we'll be more specific and some and more detailed and show you some of the things that we do that is not obvious. And because we we do documents, we file pages in here, we take pictures and we file them away. So there's all kinds of data that's behind the scenes that they can have access to that you're not going to see just by looking at, at it the way it is today. Other questions? This hey, Mark, this is, this is, this is yeah. Justin. I got a question. Yes. Yes. Do you also physically geofarm this neighborhood as well? What do you mean by you mean going door to door? <clears throat> no, I mean with like um, <clears throat> mailers or flyers. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I did. Uh, I, I work with, with Carly uh, to do postcards. I did uh, eight cards at in eight weeks, once I got a lead, sold the house in a day. Of course, I did two weeks of coming soon, but I I mailed them. I'm currently will do. I just uh, I mail once a month to our neighborhood, and sometimes we have we have five HOAs within our 700 homes. Do we have? Five H O no yeah one two yeah five sub H O A S and one master H O A. So sometimes I just mail the four hundred twenty six, which is a single family residence. Sometimes I mail all seven hundred. Just depends on how much money I want to spend that month. And so I I always do something. It's usually about helpful household hints, gardening, uh, car stuff. It's health a few health issues, not much but they're usually not heavily on real estate. My picture and my logo is there. So they know it's me. They know I'm a realtor. So they'll see that, but they'll also see stuff about landscaping, about furnace repair. Uh, the last one I sent out was maintaining a proper mattress for your bedroom. I thought that was sort of funny. I've never seen one like that. So I put it out and we mailed it last, last month. Do you know? Everyone. Do you this know one, what? Do you know what about? And you might, you might know this. You might not. Do you know what about the average cost per mailer that, that <clears throat> you send out with Vault Title? Do you know what the average cost per is? Um. Yeah, you know, I just paid the bill. It was, I think, to do. I think I pay like a hundred and. 40 bucks and vault title picks up uh, like $40 or something, $50 on top of that. So if it's $180, they might pay 40 or 50 and I pay the balance. <clears throat> I will post that tomorrow on the, on the AMP uh, Facebook page with some detailed information. Now, the other thing I do, there's, there's several ways to do a mailer. You can do every door delivery. 
But in, my, in, a, in the neighborhood where I live, every door delivery doesn't work because it doesn't match our neighborhood in any way, shape, or form. So I cannot put stuff in there that's just about our neighborhood when I do every door delivery in our neighborhood. Then you have a bulk mailing permit. Uh, Monarch Press has, uh, Minuteman Press has a bulk mailing permit. I have a bulk mailing permit, permit and that will allow you to do specific houses. Uh, I buy stamp, I buy forever stamps on Facebook Marketplace uh, for about 12 cents a piece. And I will put a postage stamp on all my postcards and all my letters that I mail out because I want the stamp to go in there. Because some people, when they see a, a, a generic uh, like printed postage, they, they, they know it's an advertisement and they won't read it. I Everything I've ever read for the last 40 years, if you put a postage stamp on it, they're more likely to look at it than if it was just a postage stamp, like a bulk mailing permit. So for 12 cents, um, I don't ask Vault Title to, to pay pay their fair share. I figure I'm saving a lot of money to, by going 12 cents because bulk mailing permit and EDDM, I'm still cheaper at 12 cents than what they would be. So I just pay that out of my pocket and I buy, I have like 4,000 stamps at home that I, I use and I buy every other month. So, Marcus Dana, I guess I'm confused. You said you buy them on Marketplace? Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. You go into... Uh... Right there, Marketplace. Can you see yeah. my screen? Yeah. Okay. So, right there, you type in... See Stamps Forever? Hmm. Their stamps for twelve cents. Okay, so you get these from people. Sometimes you might you might have to buy two hundred dollars worth. Okay. I buy I spend three to five hundred dollars every time I place the order, but I I don't I have narrowed it down to two two customer or two uh set two companies that I buy from, and and I and I just sent them a note last night. I said okay, I'm ready to buy. Buy 200 rolls, tell me your best price, and I got one for 12 bucks. Now I'm buying, I think I'm spending $250. It come to 12 cents, 12 something cents a piece. So you buy the stamps and you get the postcards from the, uh, from the yeah, printer? From the uh, or title. And then you put them yourself. Yeah, I put it right. I, I, as I'm watching Joe Mannix and Perry Mason at night, I put the stamps on. Oh. And I, it only takes me two nights to do them all. So you didn't pick up the cards from Tim? Okay. I pick up the cards from uh, Minuteman Press on Friends Road. So you can go through here. And Carly, Carly uh, Sopper at Vault Title got married last fall. I found wedding stamps for nine cents a piece. So I bought her 200 and said, here's your wedding present. So she So nine cents instead of 63 cents was a big savings for her. Plus, I didn't make her pay the nine cents. And my wife always complains that sending out Christmas cards is too expensive because postage stamps are 63 cents. Now, I think they're up to 68. So I bought her like 500 Christmas stamps. Uh, I bought her birthday stamps. Uh, so when she sends the birthday cards out, our son is a Charlie Brown fan. So I bought a couple, I bought 100 or so stamps so she would have Charlie Brown. So you can buy, you can find all kinds. You just have to look. And every and every time I order, I always ask my two companies, "What special stamps do you have?" And they always sometimes they just have the flags forever stamps, like this one, forever stamps. <clears throat> and they'll come in. It's just like buying a stamp at the post office. The wrapper will be there. It'll just just like that. Sometimes they're in a plastic container. <laughs> And at one point, I had seven thousand stamps because I, I kept buying, finding them cheaper, so I kept buying them. Linda, my wife, has no idea how much money I spend on stamps, other than she knows it's twelve cents. See, Charlie Brown. I've done lighthouses, the mighty Mississippi, national parks. 
you can find anything you want out there. Hey, Dana Kitchen, how did your listing appointment go today? Um, I had two. One was a fail, but the other one was good. So <laughs> thank you for asking. Hey, 50-50, that's not bad. That's right. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, everyone. Thank you. We're four minutes past. Uh, thanks for joining in tonight. Sorry we had a 20-minute delay. Uh, next time I'll come in 30 minutes early and get set up. But I thought since I was doing this all day, it wouldn't work going from one office to another. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you Mark. so much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Thank you.